I'm your host, Ben Scott, and today's session is sponsored by CarBodyDesign.com. CarBodyDesign.com is an excellent resource for anyone interested in all things related to automotive design and engineering. Our guest today is Patrick Fallwetter. Patrick began his career as an automotive designer, but now spends his time designing for the entertainment industry. Before we would begin, we would like to announce registration for CGMA classes beginning on September 16th. Head over to cgmwmasterclasses.com, that's cgmwmasterclasses.com, to view current course offerings and sign up for the class or classes that best fit your needs. Interview with the Masters is an ongoing series. Keep an eye on our website for more information. Patrick, welcome to Interview with the Masters. Hi, Ben, and hi, everybody who joined today. Well, it's excellent having you here today. Thank you for joining us. I'm so, Patrick, the possibility to be here today. Excellent. Now, Patrick, um, obviously, you began as a designer for vehicles. You started in the auto industry, um, and I'm going to be asking you a few questions about that, and also your transition into the entertainment industry. But I wanted to let everyone know who is uh, attending this webinar that if you have any questions for Patrick, feel free to send those in the little question box in your Go Webinar control panel. Um, if you've sent any questions to Ted before, feel free to send them again here now so that I'm able to ask them as the webinar goes on. So my first question for you, Patrick, is you began as an automotive designer. What sparked your interest in vehicles? That's a good question. Um, I would say very early in my childhood, I was already interested in everything surrounding me. So I was a very observant child, I would say. And um, the first thing I remember where I really fell in love with a car was like one of my neighbors, neighbors in the small uh, northern German town I grew up in had a 74 Corvette. And um, I was always so amazed by, by that car and um, was sneaking by from time to time. And then there was this one moment where my neighbor came out and asked me if I want to sit inside. and. So I was very amazed by all the sculpture and um, the emotion the car yeah, transpired. It was so, like, so much like a spaceship in um, that 80s, in the 80s of um, northern Germany. So um, yeah, uh, later I started to um, draw cars together with a friend and um, I would say my interest kind of diversified a lot. I was interested in everything, everything moving from like model aircrafts, model ships. I liked um, building plastic, um, uh, plastic vehicles, um, and yeah, I would say um, it was. I was focused um, on cars in my very early childhood. Then I diversified. And I would say later I came back to it. So your initial interest was remembering that, that Corvette from your youth. Was that what immediately made you want to go into automotive design? Or were there some other things that happened after that that just really built your love for moving into that industry? Um, I would say it was way too early to really consciously think about what I want to become. And um, it was more like a yeah, just a childhood um, memory and um, I mean as you become a teenager um, you slowly start to think about what you um, what you would like to become and there's also a society which tells you what you would be able to become and there's yeah just it becomes a little bit more real as older you get and um, if you would say to your parents, I want to become a car designer, um, they would tell you, like, what, are you crazy? You should learn something uh, <laughs> something real. And, um, I mean, having said that, I have to say my, my parents were really supportive of me. And um, my father, father, he's an interior designer. And so when I was a teenager, product design seemed to be um, a very realistic thing to go. And so in my uh, summer vacations, I sometimes did um, internships at, at a um, product design company. And I even tried an um, internship at an architecture firm once. And so 
that gave me the possibility to explore different different ways which would be interesting for me and um, so within these internships I um, suddenly rediscovered car design and what I liked so much about it compared to uh, product design was that it felt way more emotional so it was not just um, it was not so much um, limited to the functionality of a of a product but it gave me it seemed to give way more possibility to express emotion within within a design so yeah since I realized that vehicles are seem to be the most emotional product you can design I was totally sold on that and yeah the next thing was that I applied for design school so because of the practicality it sounds like that really is what drove you into automotive design um, which is is of course a wise decision to get into any business and where where did you end up going to school I ended up going to Pforzheim Uni University in southern Germany and um, I really had a good time there I mean I have to say you learn all the basics all the basics you need and you learn a lot of stuff you feel you don't need at that time but years later you're happy to know <laughs> most of the stuff you learned and um, one thing I have to say about uh, Fordham University which is really good that um, the school has very strong ties to the industry and which is a crucial thing because on a very early stage as a student you're able to expose your work to um, people working in big car companies and um, this exposure leads to internship and internships and um, working together with students who already have practical experience within internships it's very rewarding because they come back from the industry and um, bring a completely new um, input to the all-day school life so it really feels it's about like sharing knowledge and experience and that makes it to really like inspirational um, place because there's this mixture between um, mature design knowledge of people who already have industry experience and on the other hand the young and um, naive aspiration for art and design like the younger students bring in. So it sounds like school had a major effect directly on your career how would you say that school has affected it? Yes, it absolutely um, had an influence. So, yeah, I would say my time at Fordham University um, started started my career and made um, everything possible. What came afterward? So, yeah, already in school I got a lot of um, exposure to um, the automotive industry and I was able to gather industrial experience at places like um, um, uh, Design Center Europe in Sieges, Spain and um, Renault Design in, in Paris or Style Porsche yeah, in southern Germany and um, last but not least uh, Design Center California in Los Angeles. So. In that manner, it um, not only gave me a lot of professional experience, but also life experience. Because um, just like visiting different countries gives you a very, um, really opens your horizon, which I feel is very important as a designer. It sounds like in some ways you were mentioning before that there were some things you learned that you didn't even realize the importance of at the time, but later as you worked you started to really realize the importance of your education. Would you say that's true? Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, by the time of school, uh, when I was in fourth time, I, I enjoyed the ride, but um, I wasn't aware about, like, um, until a couple of years later, how important 
um, uh, certain decisions and certain um, um, situations at school really rare and how much they influenced my my later later life there's one example like I remember like after one of the um, end of term presentation which is called uh, Werkschau in <laughs> in Germany um, I was really like the Sunday after I, uh, I um, just slept um, like 20 hours uh, straight because I did so much work before so I was just really like uh, <laughs> tired on Monday morning and I got a phone call from like um, Akim Anscheid who uh, was head of um, the um, Design Center Europe in Spain and he called me to ask if I uh, would be interested in, in joining their team and getting experience there and that was one of these moments which really changed everything. Was uh, that where you say you, you got your start in the industry? I would say so, yeah. That was my first uh, my first um, work experience and it was kind of like a dream come true because suddenly I was um, I was in sieges and um, had like all, all these amazing designers, all my uh, design idols <laughs> surrounding me and saw like yeah people like Daniel Simon, um, Christian Felsby, Anders Warming, like um, yeah, a lot of designers I really um, envied and really admired see them working and yeah just sounds like really an unforgettable experience to go from being a student to now you're working alongside with people that have just inspired you all since your schooling has began. Absolutely. Now, what did you do at this first job? What were your responsibilities? So my um, first, um, my first um, uh, job after, after finishing in Fortsheim was to design the um, Nano Spider, which was part of um, the LA Design Challenge, which was uh, over in Los Angeles at, um, um, at Volkswagen Design Center, California. And it was a very good transition um, after school because like the project really gave me all the freedom I could have wished for and it, um, it not only allowed me to design a product but also design the whole surrounding environment and surrounding world which was really um, really rewarding for me because um, it was just a very good transition from from school to professional work life Now, as you were working early on, you're working in the automotive industries, what were some of the companies that you had the opportunity to work with? Um, altogether, I worked for um, a lot of different brands. I worked for uh, Renault, I worked for Porsche, I worked for Audi, Volkswagen, Lamborghini, Bentley. So a lot of these brands are part of um, the Volkswagen group, and I felt it was really it is really great if you have the possibility from time to time to to switch between different brands because you don't fully get absorbed into one brand but you sometimes have to turn your page and have to start completely new like working for a new brand yeah, each car brand almost has its own personality that you have to work with Absolutely, and um, switching between them was really, I would say, really fit um, the way I like to work. So you had a career in automotive design. You were working for many major companies that I'm sure that's some people's ultimate dream to be designing for, and you've now made this move to entertainment design. What really sparked that move into entertainment? Um, like the um, the nano spider was a very good example because I always 
inspired to put my design, designs into surrounding in, in, into a surrounding context. So it just felt natural to start designing the surrounding worlds as well, and that kind of led myself to get a very holistic perspective of design and that holistic um, approach is very hard to fit into one industry. So I very much enjoyed uh, or still enjoy um, working for the automotive industry but the entertainment industry kind of satisfies another part of myself, the part to yeah, design a whole world, world surrounding it. And besides that, I just love movies and um, I, I love um, epic and emotional um, experiences. And I feel in today's entertainment industry where a lot of um, different currents like uh, games and films are all like interfering and sometimes melting together. It's a very, very uh, interesting, inter interesting field for somebody who likes to design um, future experiences or like epic experiences. So it's this kind of desire to be able to expand past what's possible in the real world and even creating whole new worlds that moved you from that automotive design to wanting to work in entertainment. Exactly. Yeah, I would say it's like the first part you said, like kind of to go beyond reality, not being um, limited by reality was something which I felt really um, attractive about the entertainment industry. And that's actually a good question that one of our, our viewers is bringing up here as well, is that you've been originally building designs that are based on reality. Now you're in the entertainment industry. What do you pull from that kind of transportation uh, idea where you have to base them on reality and moving into um, entertainment where it doesn't need to be completely based on reality, but there should be some reality in some, uh, some aspects? What do you pull from that as you're designing in entertainment? How does that affect your work? I would say it um, affects it really strong. So my whole thinking pro process is um, very much influenced by like real world uh, design work. So as a, as a designer, you, you learn to not only visually work on a on a product but also to think about it on a deeper level to understand the DNA of a product or of a brand and like on an abstract level just this thinking process really helps you to work for the entertainment industry as well because there it's about to understand you need to understand a certain um, world you design for and every um, imaginary world has to have its logic in itself Other, otherwise it wouldn't be believable and to build up even if the whole thing is, is imaginary and kind of not 100% tied to reality it has to be logic in itself and to approach this logic my design background is crucial and gives me a very unique perspective so it's almost like with automotive design, you still had rules that you needed to follow. They're just bound by the laws of physics, what happens within our world. But in entertainment design, you also have that logic. It's just that it's a different kind of logic that's being created by the director and by the designers. Exactly. You can, yeah, um, kind of. I mean, um, it's kind of like generally like it's like there's a cause and there's a result or like an effect and if you design something for a planet where um, there is no um, there is no air but um, but a different different kind of gas surrounding you there are certain aspects or certain effects it would have on a vehicle for example and 
you kind of need to take all these new influences to, um, on a different planet, for example, and you have to take them for granted and have to make a believable vehicle which works within that world, like it would be reality. Now, how long did it take? You started with your automotive design, you started making this transition to entertainment. How long would you say it took for you to fully make that transition? Um, at first, I have to say, I wouldn't fully see it as a, as a transition or not as a, um, as a movement from A to B because um, I'm, I'm still a car designer and I'm also a concept artist, so I don't, um, I don't want to lose one of both. So both things are an important part of myself. And so, I mean, for sure there was, a, there was a time where I had to adjust to the new circumstances within the entertainment industry compared to what I was used to in car design. But in the end, this transition always means you're learning something new. And I feel learning new things is like the most important thing um, to grow as an artist. And after time, after a couple of years, I feel quite comfortable in both both fields. But um, yeah, in my my experience there something um, about being too comfortable in one space because it always makes you a little. Um, lazy, it takes a little bit the edge of you, so a part of um, me is always an explorer and um, who always looks for new things to try and new, new, a new cold water to jump in to get out of my comfort zone. Now, you've been working in entertainment design for how long now? Mm, I would say since like um, four to five years. So you've had a good amount of time in the entertainment design industry. What would you say are some of the biggest differences between that and working in the automotive industry? Mm. So, I mean, I, at first I have to say it is very different because I remember as a young student, uh, just having uh, graduated in Fordsheim, I felt, yeah, I can do whatever I decide to do. And then I got into the car design industry, and I felt like suddenly there was a whole new world opening. Like you, you suddenly felt like, wow, I can spend my whole life to, to really get good in, in what car design is about. and. Um, the same happened to me when I when I started to go into entertainment design. What felt kind of like um, manageable in the beginning suddenly felt like a whole new box of uh, knowledge and experience I wanted to <laughs> to get. So uh, very like what's the difference um, as a in the car design industry? It is um, you have to respect a lot of um, physical um, hard points, I would say, or physical um, regulation and boundaries, where in the entertainment industry you have diff different boundaries. You don't need to design um, around a physical package, but you have to design for a script. You have to have to design within the logic of a certain world. So what feels um, very, um, very open and very creative from outside um, is also, is in reality another way of like um, designing. You need to solve problems and you need to respect a lot of different, different aspects. And um, yeah, in the end of day, um, everything, everything being in front of the camera is there for a reason. There are no, no coincidences. And so that's what you need to uh, 
have to work around. Sounds like with almost every project you need to learn again everything that you need to know. It's like you need to start out with a blank slate is what it makes it sound like. Yes, especially in the entertainment industry. It's, I mean, like sometimes you work on a, on a sci-fi movie. The next time you would work on a, on a more medieval inspired fantasy movie. So like every project gives you a completely new view on things and, and new things you have to research and new things you have to learn about like okay what kind of what was the manufacturing technique in, in this world or in that world. But I have to say that's the fun about it and that's what makes me enjoy it so much. So let's take you back four or five years to when you're first getting started working in entertainment. What was the first project that you worked on? The first um, project I worked on was, uh, was the movie Priest, which uh, was a vampire western uh, crossover with Paul Bettany and Maggie Q. So what, what could you describe what it felt like? You've been working in automotive design, now you're on your first major film project. What did it feel like to you? Um, it was great. I was really excited to suddenly being able to design something which is not glossy and uh, shiny and heavy, <laughs> but to design something which is uh, rusty, old, menacing. <laughs> So, yeah, it was just like doing something you weren't allowed before. <laughs> it's like breaking the rules all of a sudden. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, another point which I really enjoyed about it, that, uh, that I had to design so much stuff, so many different things. There were props to design, vehicles, sets, and there was just no time to rest. So every day my production designer came in and put a couple of new assignments on my on my desk and um, so I had to put marks on my sketches with this a sign uh, preliminary drawing don't build from this from this sketch um, to, make, to make sure nobody started to build something which wasn't uh, all done or approved yet and that's something which um, was so liberating <laughs> after um, the real world design industry where you um, sometimes have to fight so hard to bring something into reality. So you had, sounds like you had many more iterations that you were just constantly doing, you're constantly creating these iterations because you're working on so many different visual aspects of the film all at once. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, I, I would agree. I, there were a lot of different different things and um, which which also explains sometimes like um, you feel like um, designed objects within films are not as sophisticated as as um, people are used to see from the car industry and I realized at that point why it is like, it's like that because it's you just need to get stuff stuff done within a certain budget and um, you just have a very narrow time frame and you have a lot of different departments um, being involved in it so it's really about it's kind of like like um, like the process of painting you just you block some big shapes in and then you refine them on the go, but it's like kind of decision making and pushing things forward with, with every step. And yeah, you just have very few time to 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 think about like refining stuff a lot. It's just like um, on some movies it's just getting things done, <laughs> which <laughs> is creatively really um, liberating. It's a really creative process. So already we're seeing that there are some pretty major differences, well there are some similarities, some pretty major differences between the two industries. How did you have to change your approach now that you're coming into entertainment? 
um, what did you have to change about the way you were thinking, about the way you were painting, and how quickly were you able to adapt to that? Um, at the beginning, it was um, kind of frightening to see. Um, when I remember my first presentation where I had to um, hang, up, hang my stuff on the wall besides uh, guys like Eric Timmons, like who inspired me my whole life, <laughs> and I felt kind of intimidated. But um, like, I, I, it turned out it's it's um, in the film industry there are people from very different backgrounds, and everybody brings um, something valid to the table. So it's a very inspiring group, group of people because everybody worked on different projects, everybody has different strong points, and yeah, that's what I like about it. So um, for example, like in the car industry, you have to, you have to, when I started start a project in car design, I have to understand my package and the package limitations and the possibilities the package gives me. And um, I also have to think about the like the whole brand um, and what this brand would allow allow me to do. And then I try to mix these factors with um, my um, naive and fresh way of sketching. So. When I start on an entertainment project, I would um, would have to pull back a little bit because suddenly there would be the question, okay, what kind of world is a, the vehicle for? Does it have three wheels or does it have one wheel? Or there are just like um, a lot of more major decisions um, to make in which direction the vehicle, for example, could go. And um, I mean, down the line, there are a lot of hard facts to respect too, but um, these are often less of a technical nature, but more of a storytelling nature. And um, you have, for example, like for a vehicle, you have to, to fit that vehicle a certain personality or to fit a certain character. So is it the villain who drives the car or is it a, is it a hero? And um, you see, there are like really different aspects uh, which I would have to fit in car design versus which I have to fit in the entertainment industry. And yeah, my approach is just um, responding to the different questions I'm asked in both different industries. Now you mentioned again as you're working on these film projects, working with people that you really admire, that are really intimidating because of their magnificent talent. A lot of the people here are looking to also break into that industry and they're going to be faced with the same thing. These incredible artists that are just so intimidating. What advice would you give to the people that are here today that are stepping into those kind of situations to be able to deal with that just level of intimidation? Don't be intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> exactly. But um, I mean, that's something of what I would tell myself too, but which um, doesn't always work. I know. Um, I would say the most important thing is to realize for yourself what you want to do, and if you have the right reasons for yourself wanting to do that. Like if you if you really um, love movies or environments or um, certain aspects of it and you really do everything to, to get there, then nobody can can um, stand in your way because you would just go your way. So I would say it all starts in your head and um, it's so important to understand understand yourself and your own goals before you walk a certain certain direction. Now like you said you have between four and five years of experience. What are some other major entertainment products that you've worked on that some of us might be familiar with? Um, I worked on the movie yeah on the movie Priest like I mentioned. I worked on um, 
upcoming Jack the Giant Killer, I worked on G.I. Joe Retaliation, I worked on on a couple of um, video games which are not announced yet, which I uh, yeah, don't want to mention at this point. So the whole nature of the industry is that there's a very long time before uh, major products will be published after um, after people start working on them. So with a lot of movies I worked on, they're not not out yet um, because. Like as a part of the art department, you're part in um, part of um, pre-production. So like you first concept the whole world, and after the um, the art department is done with its work, with its work, then like the principal photography starts, which like yeah might might um, take a long time, and after that there's like the whole post-production part. So Actually, um, four or five years is not a long time within the nature of the industry. What I think I hear more and more often from entertainment designers is it's the coolest job to have, it's the coolest industry to work in, but you just can't tell everyone what you're doing today. <laughs> <laughs> That's you don't true. get to talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, you hear me being uh, cautious. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's um, actually like working in the car industry before gives you a good training because that's even more uh, low key and uh, secretive. So I'm actually um, actually used to uh, even higher standard of security. And sometimes people um, in the entertainment industry make fun about uh, me when I'm too cautious in <laughs> what I'm. <laughs> Thing and what not, but I feel like it's better this way than the other way around. And I mean, they're like on big, big projects. There's a lot of, um, a lot of money and a lot of risk involved. Like, um, yeah. So it's a major responsibility. Totally. Now, when you are first making a design, whether it's an environment, whether it's a vehicle, what is the first step that you take? What is the first thing you do? Um, at first, I read the script, and um, because it just gives you gives you a major direction. I mean, what it is all about. You can't just um, start start sketching, and then you then I talk to the director or the production designer to just get an idea about like where the whole project is heading, what kind of um, what are their visions and yeah what kind of what kind of world or what kind of feel what kind of mood should the whole the whole world have so you essentially get that kind of research in and the backstory and all the information you need before you start working on the design exactly I mean, yeah research is one part of it but first like yeah researching what um, yeah what the involved parties of the project really want to get out of it and then like when I by the time I understand okay it's for example like it's a more medieval or it's a more sci-fi-ish world and I start to yeah research uh, yeah technology but also like um, yeah stories which were maybe similar or products which were maybe similar which you have to um, work around or which you can be inspired by and yeah at some point you start to feel that there are like ideas building in your head and yeah another part of it is kind of just um, turn down all your um, conscious thinking process and just um, start scribbling stuff so there's kind of like one um, creative trial and error approach and one more conscious, more controlled um, approach. And I really like to mix both both processes because they really inspire each other. And sometimes you, um, your um, naive and playful side just come up with stuff you couldn't, couldn't really come up on a conscious level. So it's kind of like 
to compare it with painting again to just um, splash color on the canvas and then read within <laughs> the <laughs> result what it could be like kind of re like reading clouds. So you take many different approaches when you're beginning a design just kind of based on what you feel like is the best for that moment. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. And I also try to not to get too comfortable in one process. So if people often ask me like, yeah, what's your process? Like how do you like what way do you do you design or what way do you sketch? And it always gives me a hard time because I can't really say or at least for myself I don't feel I have this one recipe in which I work. For me it's more I very much value the, the creative process. I try to yeah, try different things every time to get to my to achieve my goal. Now, I wanted everyone to know who's still here as an attendee and people that have just come in um, that we are speaking with Patrick Fallwetter today. If you do have any questions for Patrick, I did want to remind you that there is a question box. Feel free to put um, your questions inside of that box. I'll, I'm currently reading all the questions and I'll also be passing those on to Patrick. And It looks like we do have quite a few questions for you, Patrick, from the audience. and I'm going to start asking you a, a couple of those. Uh, we have right. one person here who um, is uh, talking about your transportation, your automobile uh, design experience. And, it, and I think you've mentioned this a bit before, where you have kind of the shiny surfaces, smooth, lots of flow, and now you're moving to things like Priest with rust and dirt. Um, was it difficult for you to switch between those two styles of design? Mm. Not really. Uh, I mean, it was... I saw more like the upside of it, like all the possibilities it gave me what I what I couldn't do before, which I wasn't allowed to do before. But um, yeah, I mean for sure you have to kind of uh, you have to experience that world for a certain time until you you get um, um, better in that um, rusty world, but. I mean, that's just like the nature of, of the entertainment industry that you always have to, from each project to a new project, you will hit these new levels of um, what you're asked to do. And I feel it's kind of getting used to leaving your comfort zone. Because, um, yeah, sometimes it's scary, but on the other hand, like, the times you're scared you learn the most. We have another question here asking if you could do your studies all over again, would you still study automobile design or would you have changed your studies to entertainment design? That's an interesting question. Right now I would say um, I would have done it the way I did because I, I'm very grateful for having my automotive um, knowledge and experience. Um, if you would have asked me during my, like, during my time in Fordsheim, I was always um, very um, envious about uh, like people studying at the art center who have a, have a more direct contact to people like uh, in the entertainment industry. And so I feel like it's easier to to um, learn painting at a later stage than to learn car design at a, at a later sca um, stage of your life because in car design there is so much practical experience involved which you can just gather within the industry and not outside. And um, after the spending a time in both industries you feel um, design schools are a starting point but like the whole footwork you kind of need to do yourself and in general I feel it doesn't um, sometimes doesn't matter so much what particular um, field you study like studying is studying is more about learning how to learn 
learning how to um, work with knowledge and how you how to teach stuff to yourself. I hope that answers the question. I think it does. And this kind of plays off of that question. And while you were studying those automotive classes, how were you also able to, it seems because you clearly have excellent foundational art skills, excellent painting skills, were you learning those skills um, while you were studying automotive design? And are those the same skills that you were able to take with you, the same painting and foundational art skills that you were able to take with you to entertainment design? Yes, for sure. Like a part of it, it um, absolutely is. Um, the thing is, like when I was in uh, um, in school, I always tried to take as much freedom as I could, and so like all my projects at school were felt really far away from the real world uh, ca car design industry. They were very just um, they were already kind of kind of in between entertainment and car design, and yeah, to to execute them, I think I yeah, I already used a lot of skills which help me right now, but um, I mean that's the grace of that's a nice thing about like today about internet that you have access to so many different fields, and um, Already when I went to school, I mean, I studied from 2001 until 2006, and I have to say there were a lot of things I I got aware about through the internet. Though so I think, like uh, 20 years ago, I would never have um, had the possibility to get into entertainment design or even to learn so much about it. And I mean that whole um, um, thing about like getting knowledge throughout internet or like people gathering more in groups of interests and in like groups of like where they located is just going on and on. Now, when you were going to school, uh, were you mostly working with traditional media? Had digital media started to become prevalent? What was your focus while you were within that, that automotive design program? Um, the focus from, from teachers at school was more traditional, but it was the time where in like, all the car design studios, people um, got more and more into Photoshop. So um, it was, I would say, I was within one of the first, like, or one of the generations really um, embracing digital technology. And um, I mean, today there is no question anymore if you, <laughs> as a car design student, if you're able to do Photoshop. When I was at school, it was still, I would say, um, maybe 50-50, or it was not that clear what kind of um, media you use. And we have an excellent question here. Um, you create very interesting designs. Some of them, you know, border between being functional. Some of them are very imaginative and they are able to combine both. Um, how do you create those interesting designs um, without making them appear too similar to references, um, real world references like vehicles and, and environments. How do you sit on that line between imagination and realism? Um, I feel there are two, two questions in it. Like at first, like the difference between imaginative and realistic designs. And I think that one is, um, is answered by my experience within um, in the real world design industry, but also being very interested in imaginary world worlds, and that both automatically combines these things. 
And um, the other question is how do I make them look not as much as um, vehicles or designs we know? And the, the answer for that question, in my opinion, is that I don't um, look too much on other people's other people's work. I often try to create things out of my own head and not look too much on other portfolios and other stuff. So I try to keep myself uh, true and authentic to what I what I feel. Question from an attendee here. Um, after all the experience that you have, after all the design that you've made, what is your favorite type of thing to design? Environments, transportation, props, what is your favorite? <laughs> take, take a vehicle in a, within an environment. For me, it's, it's really, I, I can't really, and I don't want to choose, and I hope I don't have to choose. <laughs> I, really, I really like to do different things, and that's part of my personality, I would say. And I really like to work on a super sports car in the morning and then switch the um, paper and in the afternoon work on a, on a um, medieval-inspired fantasy movie. I mean, that's kind of what, what inspires me and what keeps me um, creative and keeps me challenged. So I can't give you a clear answer to that. <laughs> it's a very difficult question. <laughs> Is there a certain place that you derive a lot of your inspiration from? Um, I really I love California, love being in California, because for me California is, is uh, gives such a variety in inspirational input. And every day there are situations where I feel like blown away by or inspired by and feel like, wow, I would like to paint that. Or, there are just so many different things around here which I like. So I would say, yeah, if I would have to choose a place, I would choose uh, Los Angeles because of that. And um, one thing I particularly like is the light. I mean, I haven't seen, I traveled a lot throughout the last couple of years. But I feel like there's no question that the light in California is just unmatched by any places I've seen. Now, of the things that you are allowed to talk about, and this is going to be our last question for today, of all the projects that you've been able to work on, what is the thing that you're most proud of doing? I'm not allowed to tell you. I, <laughs> um, that kind of um, similar to what you asked before. It's um, I don't want to choose choose one thing. I'm I'm proud of the bandwidth of projects I have influenced. I'm happy to have influenced things like Nano Spider or Slipstream, but also like real world products like the Lamborghini Euros. I was uh, I'm happy to have influenced movies like Priest or the upcoming GI Joe. So. I'm proud of having working on very different things. And um, last but not least, I'm proud of the project I'm de developing on my own and with, together with my writing partner, and which I hopefully will be able to publish soon. Well, I think that's an excellent answer because to me what that sounds like is what you're most proud of is just being able to be involved in this industry with artists putting out amazing work. Exactly. It's all about being an artist and being able to, to have the opportunity to be creative and yeah, I think that's all you can wish for as an artist. Well, Patrick, I want to thank you again for coming and having this interview again with us today. It was really eye-opening. I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I'm sure that everyone here enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much, Ben. It was a pleasure, and also thank you all who have joined. And I wanted to also thank everyone that's joined us today. 
I did want to say again that today's session was sponsored by CarBodyDesign.com. CarBodyDesign.com is an excellent resource for anyone interested in all things related to automotive design and engineering. And once again, we spoke with Patrick Fallwetter today. And I do want to announce registration for CGMA classes does begin on September 16th. So head over to CGMWMasterClasses.com to view current offerings and sign up for classes that best fit your needs. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Thanks again, Patrick, and I hope everyone has an excellent evening.